103. Hey guys, Vass here from Aussie RC Playground and this is my review of the Armour Creighton 6S. Now this is a 1.8 scale four wheel drive monster truck. It comes with a 2050 kV four pole brushless motor, a waterproof 180 amp ESC and a waterproof 15 kilogram steering sewer up the front. Everything rides on a three millimeter chassis and you have five millimeter drive shafts, turnbuckles and shock towers. All right, so let's move on to this review and try to get through it as quickly as possible because there is quite a bit, a bit of information to get through here. I don't know how I'm gonna go, but chances are this review is probably gonna be another 20 minutes long. So kicking off, we're gonna start with the remote. I have reviewed this remote several times in the past, so I'm gonna be very brief here, but it does run on four double A's and it has a removable tray that you can unplug and plug in a rechargeable battery if you wanna do that. It has a nice, comfortable feel in the hand drop down wheel uh, with a bit of a foam surround on here, collapsible antenna, and uh, it does have the usual trimmings behind a kind of semi see-through little flipper door back here. And when you turn the remote on, it actually shines a couple of LED lights on there to let you know it's on, and uh, also give you a warning when you've got uh, low battery. Um, I have found no issues with these remotes whatsoever, uh, despite the, the brand that they come uh, attached with. And uh, yeah, these guys should serve you well without any problems at all. Now, moving on to the truck itself. And I say truck because Armour actually advertised this as a monster truck, but I'm going to uh, disagree a little bit here. I don't believe that this is actually a monster truck. I'm actually gonna call this one a monster truggy. Some people actually call it muggy. Um, I that kind of has a different meaning uh, in some parts of the world, I guess, but uh, Monster Truggy is what I'm gonna be dubbing this one. And the reason why I say this is because, well, I have several Monster Trucks and they don't look like this. They don't have a rear spoiler. They're not low slung like this one is. Uh, this is sitting quite low at the moment because the last time I ran this truck uh, was actually um, doing some speed runs with the high speed pinion gear in here and I just haven't raised it back up again but it does usually sit up a little bit higher than this. So um, what's different between this one and a regular monster truck? Well let me bring uh, forth a couple of examples and uh, then you guys can make up your mind. Exhibit A, monster truck, monster truggy. Exhibit B, monster truck, monster truggy. Exhibit C, monster truck, not so monster truck. I think you guys get the general idea. This is a monster truck. This is not a monster truck. So with all that said, does that mean that I didn't like this truck? Absolutely not. On the contrary, I love this thing. It's a shame that it's advertised as a monster truck because I think it is a little bit deceiving. It doesn't have the same characteristics that all of those monster trucks that I just showed you have. It handles a lot better and uh, it performs a lot better. It flies through the air, probably just as good as some of the other ones, um, but it runs circles around them. I mean, it, you can't really put this in the same category. You, you, you have a completely different look. You have a rear spoiler to deal with. The only thing that this really has in comparison to a monster truck is its size by 1.8 scale and the fact that it runs big monster truck tires. Aside from that, um, you have a very wide stance, a very long wheelbase, and the truck is in incredibly stable. I call it a truck, uh, but it really is more of a truggy. Um, forgive me if I swap between those two terms during this review, but it, it handles very, very nicely. Uh, so um, I personally really do like it. I just hope that I'm a kind of, look at the product a little bit closer, look at what it's going up against because it's really, I, I, can't, I can't call this a monster truck. It's, it doesn't resemble a monster truck. And I've actually tried to put monster truck bodies on here and they just don't fit. The uh, rear shock tower actually sticks up above the body. You don't have adjustable body posts, so you can't really uh, position aftermarket bodies in here unless you fabricate something and, uh, and make some sort of adjustable body posts. So um, you, I think the best body to fit on here will actually be a truggy body, much like uh, the Italian that you see behind me, which is a truggy. 
um, and I have done a comparison between this one and that one so you know what that is a proper 1/8 scale truggy this is oversized uh, because of its wheelbase and so forth so um, uh, those bodies do fit on here because uh, it uses the exact same chassis and uh, that's probably going to be your best bet once you get through uh, you know destroying the stock body uh, to put a different body on here you, you're better off going for a truggy body uh, speaking of which this one has actually held up reasonably well uh, I did tear the uh, rear of it here because the chassis does flex a little bit and uh, landing on some big jumps I think uh, the chassis must have, must have flexed and kind of pulled the, um, the, the body posts uh, towards the rear and kind of tore through the body a little bit. Um, other than that the body's actually been holding up pretty well. Uh, can't really complain too much about it. I think it's done its job for a stock ready to run body. Uh, tires on this guy uh, have actually been pretty good as well. I will say that um, you know they do grip reasonably well on the off-road terrain that I have. Uh, probably not the best on-road. I did find the rubber compound to be a bit too hard and I did mention this when I did the unboxing for this truck or truggy and uh, uh, yeah it, on the road it does struggle a bit but you know something like this you're not going to be using it on the road all that often unless of course you're doing some speed runs and even then it actually uh, you know the tires hold okay it's just in cornering and so forth that you will notice them slipping and sliding a bit uh, but off-road even through the uh, loose gravel uh, down at my uh, bmx track where i normally run my rcs these actually held up pretty uh, pretty well uh, so tires are you know i think they'll pass they're not the best ready to run tire i've come across but certainly uh, they did their job okay um, the shocks actually performed very, very nicely. However, one of the problems that I had with these shocks is that the springs that they came with were actually very short and uh, I ended up swapping them out for my ST4 springs. A lot of people have been asking me what springs I swapped these out for. Uh, because I have so many different trucks here at home and so many different RCs, I managed to find my uh, ST4 springs actually fitted on here without any problems at all. So I ordered an extra set. Um, I put these on here and uh, yeah, they, they work very, very nicely. These are standard one eight scale uh, shocks, so you are likely to find other springs that will do the same job from different brands. Uh, but it is unfortunate that these, uh, this particular uh, truggy actually comes out of the uh, out of the box with very short springs, and they're actually quite weak as well. They're not a, a very thick metal, so they're they're very soft. And uh, yeah, pretty much when I took it out of the uh, box, I noticed it was sagging quite a bit. It didn't really want to lift, and. Uh, the collars on the rear shocks in particular were threaded all the way to the end of the thread because these are threaded bodies and I really had no adjustment. I, ha I couldn't compress them anymore and I couldn't release them anymore because the springs were so short. So hopefully Armour will fix that in the near future. Um, other things that have gone very well, the uh, electrics on this are actually very powerful. Uh, the truck is claimed to reach 60 plus miles an hour and uh, I did reach that speed. In fact, I think I got about 106 kilometers an hour was, was best uh, with this guy. Um, I believe I'm running a 17 tooth pinion on here from memory. So uh, a little bit more than what is actually required, but I did want to really get uh, push the car and see how fast I could go with it. Uh, you will hit 60 miles, I'm sure, with a 16 tooth, which is what Armour recommends to get to that speed. Unfortunately, you don't get that pinion. Uh, stock pinion on the truck is a 12 tooth. They give you an optional 14 tooth which I highly recommend you use the 14 tooth because the 12 tooth is just way under geared. Uh, I found the truck to be uh, quite lacking in speed, whether it was 4S or 6S. Um, but once I went to the 14 tooth, it performed a lot better. I had good all round speed and uh, both on road and off road. And uh, yeah, I think the 14 tooth is a good a happy medium. If you want to go crazy and do some speed runs and uh, hit that 60 plus miles an hour, yeah, you're going to have to uh, source your own 16 tooth, which is a little bit unfortunate, I think. Everything else on the truck has held up very, very nicely. I didn't have any major breakages, didn't break any AMs or hinge pins or anything like that. Uh, roll cage did its job very well. I did land the, the truck upside down a few times and it does definitely protect the body from uh, caving in on itself because this is quite a heavy vehicle, uh, especially when you've got a couple of big 3S battery packs in here. Uh, landing it upside down, you know, even if it's a small tumble, you can obviously damage the body quite a bit. So the roll cage does come in very, very handy. Um, you have a five millimeter drive shafts all the way around, including the center, which is fantastic. Uh, of course, you've got five millimeter shock towers. Now these are pressed aluminum, so they are a little bit soft. And in fact, my rear shock tower has got a slight bend in it. 
only very slight. I haven't even bothered to uh, replace it and, or even straighten it back up because it's it's just so minor. Uh, you really have to look quite closely to, to, to pick it up. Uh, the front shock tower has been totally fine. Uh, my diffs have been holding up very, very well. Uh, haven't had any issues with those. Turnbuckles have been fine with the exception of the inner bearings. Uh, I did do a uh, recent video of RC Pit Stop where I replaced the inner bearings on these uh, turn knuck uh, steering knuckles, I should say, not turnbuckles, uh, steering knuckles. Uh, I did replace the inner bearings and um, they, are, they seem to be a fairly common thing that happens because even my Italian, uh, I went through a, a set of bearings in the front end of that as well. Now, I heard a rumor from somewhere, I don't know if I read it or if someone told me that there were these knuckles have actually been uh, upgraded or updated and uh, there seems to be a bit less of an issue with these uh, inner bearings. I don't know how much truth that holds, uh, but I'm kind of hoping that is actually true. However, these bearings are not a specific design or, or size. You just have to get the size off your instruction manual and uh, you'll be able to source these from other suppliers if you find that they are failing on you on a regular basis. Get some better quality bearings and you'll be uh, good to go without any issues at all. Now, another positive on this truck is that everything is waterproof, of course. So if you do want to splash around in water or you, you, know, you happen to be in an area where there's snow, you can bash this guy around uh, without any problems um, and having to worry about electrics failing on you. Speaking of electrics, there was one failure of course and I know that a lot of you have been waiting for me to get to this point and that is the ESC. Now the ESC, the original ESC on this truck actually did fail on me. I was about to shoot a video and uh, unfortunately the ESC caught, uh, you know, started smoking which is a pretty bad uh, and nasty habit to take up. And uh, it was just running on 4S, it was plugged in, it was turned on, it was not running at the time, although it had sort of done a little bit of a sort of a run around and uh, it hadn't been used hard. It was probably on for no more than about two or three minutes before the ESC went up in smoke. Now it just smoked and catch fire, nothing bad happened. I unplugged the car and um, yeah, got in contact with Armour. They then put me onto a local distributor, which in turn uh, replaced the ESC for me without any problems at all. It did take a little bit of time for the ESC to turn up, but it did get replaced and it didn't cost me anything, which is a great thing because I mean, that means that Armour as a company are standing by the product and obviously honor their warranties very well. Of course, I'm not the only one that has had their ESC replaced, several people online. Uh, and even some friends close to me have had their ESCs replaced, uh, which means that it's a fairly common problem. And it is very, very unfortunate that this is one of the downfalls of these 1.8 scale armor vehicles. However, with all that said and done, I have three of them here at home. As you can see, I have the Typhon uh, on my lower uh, right, uh, your left, and I have the Talion just above my shoulder. Both of those cars are still running the original ESCs and no problems there. So one in three, seems to be a bit of a kind of a bit of an issue. The good news is though that the new ESC that has uh, in fact uh, been replaced is a little bit different and uh, I have to say that I'm very very happy with this one. It's different in the sense that the top of the grill is uh, the detail of the armor symbol is, is a much uh, deeper and refined detail. Uh, there's also embossed on the bottom of the ESC, it says made in China, whilst the original one had a sticker. And the original uh, fan grill on the ESC was just a flat kind of, almost like a cutout of the armor symbol. So these do look to be an updated version of the original ESC, which is a good thing. Which means that armor are obviously looking into the issues, uh, into this uh, ESC issue and uh, dealing with it and updating it and reacting to it, which is great. Um, I have to say, and I'm going to close this off here, oh, before I do, um, there has been several people complaining about the rear spoiler mount breaking, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. I have been very, very lucky. I haven't broken mine. Uh, I've tumbled this thing, back flipped it, ran it, and cartwheeled it several times. Did not break my rear spoiler mount. So I've either been extremely lucky or there is definitely a problem out there where these, um, uh, the, the mount itself is just a little bit too thin and uh, just can't really take a bad landing um, if you do happen to land on your rear spoiler. So that's probably something that Armour will need to look into because breaking these all the time uh, does become a, a bit of an issue. In fact, I have two friends uh, locally who have the Armour Creighton and uh, they have broken the rear spoiler mount. So I know it happens. Uh, didn't happen to me though, 
but uh, there are several people out there that are having that problem. Other than that guys, the springs, the inner bearings on the uh, turn knuck uh, steering knuckles and the ESC uh, failing which was replaced under warranty, I've had no other issues with this truck. It has been fantastic, it handles very well, it's extremely fast, uh, I think it's very durable. Um, the diffs have been holding up fine as I said. It has front and rear sway bars pre-installed. Uh, it's all waterproof. It has the uh, built-in roll cage. You can run 6S straight out of a box, which is fantastic. Not a lot of uh, RCs at this price range, which I think is just over the $500 mark uh, in US dollars. I think here in Australia, they sell for about $650, $700. Uh, correct me in the comments for those of you who live in Australia and um, you know have seen different prices, but I think that's roughly what they are here. And I think that's actually a decent value because to get the equivalent from a different brand, uh, like Traxxas e Revo, for example, you, you're going to be paying, uh, I think it, they're about a thousand bucks, maybe just over a thousand here in Australia. So this is a good compromise. You can still run success and it delivers. Um, I think this is an excellent RC. That's my personal belief. And that's after driving so many other trucks as you've seen um, that I presented to you earlier. This one outhandles all the other MTs. But is it really an MT? Come on, Armour, this is not a monster truck. What I would like to see is them create some sort of hybrid twin vertical plate monster truck like they do with the uh, uh, 110 scale vehicles um, and just stretch that out, similar to what they've done with the Raider XL, and maybe you know slap a two 3S batteries on either side of the chassis and, and come up with a monster truck you know, using the same A-arms out of this or something like that create something really cool uh, and, and a proper high center of gravity monster truck, something that doesn't have a rear spoiler that you can actually use monster truck bodies on. Uh, that would be something that I would really, really like to see from, from Armour. But for a monster truggy, uh, this definitely excels. Uh, it gets two big thumbs up and um, yeah, that is my review of the Armour Creighton. If you have any questions, please be sure to uh, leave, your, uh, leave your comments down in the comment section below. Don't forget to check the video description for more links on the videos that I've done with this RC, as well as a link to the Armour website, and of course, my Facebook page uh, if you want to get in touch with me or perhaps just uh, keep up to date with what goes on behind the scenes. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.